Welcome to Sports World Have Your Say. I'm Jason Roberts and this is a show that always takes it to the last minute. It's the most amazing end to a season in Premiership history as Manchester City snatch it at the last. City boss Roberto Mancini reflects on the title taken on goal difference in the 95th minute. I think that because we wanted, we wanted this, this title and we deserve to win this title. Man United boss Sir Alex Ferguson laments the irony of City winning in Fergie time. We got five minutes injury time to help them. But at the end of the day, in bar for Manchester United, I congratulate Manchester City winning the week. We're on Twitter and you can join the conversation at hashtag Swise. We're also going to talk about QPR staying up, Bolton going down and the fight for the Champions League. If you've got a point to make, we've got the place to make it. So please get in touch with us here at Sports World Have Your Say. All the details on the right hand side of your screen. Loads of you are already in touch via Facebook and Twitter. Give us a call using country code 44 20 70 83 73 33. Joining us are West Brom defender Stephen Reid and England's women's international Sue Smith. But first, a summary of the latest news. Welcome back to Sports World, have your say. It's been an amazing day in the Premier League today. I don't think anybody could have imagined what would happen. Please feel free to join in the conversation. Hashtag Swise on Twitter, Facebook forward slash Sports World, have your say. Or email us on sportswise at BBC. Dot com. I've got Stephen Reid with me today. Reedy, how did you how did you enjoy today's football? I think I'd have to say, wow, incredible day. I think we're just about catching our breath back here in the in the studio. We had everything today: passion, the entertainment of the Premier League, and just the drama for it to go to the last couple of minutes. It's just incredible. Well, Reedy, I got to tell you, I was there watching it with you. My head was in my hands. I was on the floor. <laughs> I, I I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. I think we witnessed the most exciting end of season ever in Premier League history. We've got Omar, who's a Man City fan, and he's over in Nairobi. Omar, can you tell me about how you felt about today? Hello, Omar? No, no, we seem to have a problem getting Omar up. But we've got Steve in Liverpool. Tell us how you're feeling, Steve. Oh, it's been a mad day today, Jason. Absolute mad. You won't believe it. City have you on the edge of your seat all the time. They do it the hard way all the time. But we're in, we're in raptures. It is fantastic. 44 years of hurt, just gone. Absolutely gone. <laughs> Was it worth the wait? Pardon? Was it worth the it's wait? Worth the wait? No, it should have come long, long ago. <laughs> but, you know, you've, got, you've got to thank the, the, the people that own City now for putting the money in just for us to get on the same wavelength as United, to challenge them, to be a force in Manchester once more. Steve, how does this shift the balance of power in Manchester and the Premier League? Well, I think you, you've got to give it a two or three years. I think we're up there now with the Liverpools and the United, but they've got the history. But there's no, no taking it away from us. We're there to stay now because we've got the backing and we've got the passion and we've always had the fans' passion. It's absolutely brilliant. The fans today at City were absolutely brilliant. And all over, you know, there's fans all over the world that support City as well. Steve, you've had, you've had such a, how should we say it, turbulent time, I'd imagine, um, supporting City over the years. Uh, do you just feel you, you've got what you've uh, deserved today after so many years of hurt? Oh, I think we've had a fantastic season. You know, there's been a lot of knockers to knock us down and to say, well... You know, when, the, when it gets hard, then City go missing. But today proved we don't go missing. Two or three times this year, we've come back in injury time, just like United do, and win in Fergie time. But we call it the Mancini time now. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, over in Nairobi, Omar, tell me how you're feeling today. Hello, Omar. Here. Yeah. How do you feel about today? Uh, it's an amazing day, amazing day. I mean, uh, what uh, the players, uh, Man City players did today, Harry Houdini would have been proud of it. <laughs> it was amazing, amazing. <laughs> Albeit, I, <laughs> it was nail-biting. I finished all my nail, I should say. Omar, who are the key performers, in your opinion, this season to deliver the title at last to you? Um, without a shadow of a doubt, we have the best spine in the league. With Joe Hart in goal, uh, 17 um, clean sheets this season. 
ahead of him. We have Company, who's been amazing, amazing. Capped um, his, his uh, best season so far with, uh, with that headed goal um, at the Etihad against United. We have Yaya Toure ahead of him. And then we have the, you know, I, I, I just don't have any more words to talk about um, Masaji Aguero. Amazing. We have the best spine and, uh, you know, um, all young, hungry players. And I think uh, um, we have a team for the future, no doubt. Brilliant. Omar, this is what Roberto Mancini had to say after the match. We dominated for 28 games. We had some problem uh, with uh, some player injury. But now, when you beat uh, a, a team like United, a strong team like United, you beat twice in one season, you deserve to win this title. Going out to celebrate with those fans, it means an awful lot to this club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, because they deserve this. Sue Smith, the England women's international, is with us today. Sue, what did you think of an amazing last day in the Premier League? Absolutely amazing. You know, I think the entire season's been fantastic and I think today just topped it off. You know, you didn't know who was going to win the championship. You didn't know who was going to go down. You didn't... It was just... It was unbelievable. And I think the way Man City did it today was just... You know, for those fans, you could just see in their faces how emotional they were. You know, you, at one point it was, it was QPR were going to win the game and obviously Joey Barton got sent off and it was yeah. completely against them. And then suddenly, you know, they came back. And I just think just a little bit of class, you know, from Aguero and, and that's why he's worth it. Five million. Without a doubt, Sue. And, and you know, for all those fans, they'll probably say Man City, that's the way they were going to win it. It was never going to be easy. It was never <laughs> going to be, you know, just trodden along and, and win it. It was going to be a last minute goal and, and, and how they done it as well. Oh, without a doubt. And I think, you know, I think the fans expect that now. They expect a little bit of excitement and, you know, on the edge of their seats. And, and that's exactly what they did. And, and like I say, I think, you know, they say 35 million for a player. That's why you spend that amount of money, because he, he just had... He was so cool, you know, the way he took the ball past, you know, the defender and then just slotted it. It was just... It was unbelievable. And, and like I say, just a, a fantastic sort of day for, for all Man City fans. Yeah. Well, we have Steve, who's a Man United fan over in Salford, obviously feeling differently about the whole situation. Steve, tell us how you're feeling today. Sick as a dog right now after getting my hopes <laughs> up in those last 10 minutes. I mean, going into the game, we didn't really think it was going to happen. We thought, well, City will, will deal with QPR quite easily. And then just as the time got on and QPR got in front, you thought it might happen. And then just have it snatched away at the end. It's, it's a sickener, absolutely. Hey, Steve, just coming in there, what, what happens now? Where do you go from now? And where do you feel that you have to strength and going into next season because although it's happened all today I'm sure both both sides of Manchester will be preparing now for next season and how, how they go about strengthening and releasing players and selling players so how do you think that United can strengthen? Well we need to I mean you can see it's a squad that's in uh, in transition a little bit at the moment I mean to be as close to City as we were was quite brilliant but I think you'll see maybe Berbatov, Owen and a few others go, go out now and he needs to sort of find some midfield really we've not really got anybody in there bar May Rooney, who's going to be creative, so maybe just look to, to make the squad a little bit deeper because with injuries this season, it's really cost us. Well, that's, that's the thing as well, because despite Paul Scholes coming back and doing so, so well, he's done tremendous since he's been back, should you have to be bringing Scholes back out of retirement, if you like, being well, the size of club you are? Exactly, that's it. I mean, without Skulls coming back in January, I, I dread to think where we may have ended up. But I think that's a, a catalogue of, of situations because really you've ended up with Anderson being injured, Cleverly being injured and also obviously Fletcher with his illness. So maybe if they were flip, fit, we might have seen a different picture. But I mean, yeah, we, we don't really want to be bringing players back like that. So really we need now to probably get in two or three players at least in that middle who, who, who can just compete, really. I'm just going to bring Omar in. Um, Omar, you're on with Steve. Omar, just a little bit about where you felt the league was won and where United maybe lost it. Uh, definitely the, the, the um, game at Old Trafford, uh, where United lost by um, six goals to one. That was a five-goal difference, which is basically a ten-goaler, if you look at it that way. And, uh, you know, the difference at the end of the day was eight goals. So, um, uh, definitely that's where, City, uh, that's where United lost it. And I think where City won it, is uh, when, um, after going eight points behind, um, uh, you know, Wigan come in and uh, um, beat United, and then uh, Everton coming back and drawing 4-4. But for me, um, uh, Yaya Touré's performance against Newcastle, and I should also say, I mean, uh, um, uh, Micah Richards, you know, when it was 1-0, uh, 
uh, against uh, Newcastle at, uh, at, uh, at the Sports Direct Arena. He threw himself to a Shola Miyobi shot, which was just into the net. He threw himself, hands in the back, and take it, uh, taken it out. If, if Amiobi would have scored, definitely would not be there. So I've got several moments, but I think uh, the, the, the game at Old Trafford between United and City, that's where, that's where we won, without, without a doubt. Steve, where was the title won? Uh, well, the fact that we, every time we've gone a goal behind this season, we've never come back and won. There's a, a difference now in that when City went down, you saw that belief, you saw that ability to get back into games, and we've just not had that this season. So it's a bit of temperament as well. There's not a lot of players left in the United squad from years gone by where they were able to, to get that temperament right. And I think we've got to relearn that, whereas... City have got that now from the FA Cup game in January against us where they nearly come back. You've seen that belief in them and, and that belief's got them through to the title and congratulations to them on it. For me, Steve, as well, though, I still think we've got to give United a lot of credit here. They finished second, but they finished second on the, the highest points tally I think ever recorded in the, in the Premier League. So I think we've got to give them credit. They've not been at their best... Oh, exactly. For most of the season, but they're still there, still there right to the end. Absolutely. I mean, we've heard how fantastic this City team have been all season, and credit to them, but United took it to the last day and goal difference, and this is supposed to be one of the worst teams we've had in years, so there's plenty of hope there. It's not all doom and gloom. It's just a bit of a bitter blow that it's, it's City we've lost the title to. I just want to yeah, bring absolutely. in Steve in Liverpool there. Steve, Steve in Liverpool, what's your thoughts? I think, I think the manager, Mancini, nobody's talked about him, but when we was eight points down with six games to go, the psychological of that going into the dressing room, the psychology of that going into the players saying, look, you're good enough, you can do it. Six games on the bounce, win, 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 win. That is absolutely a fantastic feat for a man manager to go in and do that. I think that's where it was won. Steve, I don't want to ruin your day already, and a couple of hours after you just won the league. But for me, I think it'd probably start now for Man City. They're going to be re regrouping, I'd say, most of the management team next week, deciding where to strengthen and where to, to maybe sell a few players and let a couple go. Where, who do you feel that they might let go and who would you like to see him bring in? Well, I think Tevez. I think, I think people come in for Tevez now because I, I really do think he still wants to go. I can't see him changing his mind 100% about staying. I just don't know how that comes. You don't do what he's done this season to come back and say you want to stay for up two or three years. Unless nobody wants to buy him, I think he will go. And I think we need to strengthen one more player in midfield because we did miss Tory when he went. Yeah. But I also think we don't need that many because the likes of Milner and Johnson are still coming through and finding the feet. And the more games they get, the better they're going to get. I just want to bring in Sue there. Sue, I know you've been in many dressing rooms. Um, <laughs> you've dealt with players. How do you think the dressing room will deal with the fact that they've gone on and won it after the problems they've had, the high-profile problems they've had with the likes of Balotelli, <laughs> with the likes of Tevez? How will this bring them back in now they've gone on and actually won the thing? Yeah, I think, well, it's got to be confidence. They've got to be absolutely brimming with confidence now. And, and I think, you know, Balotelli, he's had so much bad press. But to be fair, I think he came on today and I think he was a bit of a catalyst, you know. Mm. He helped the Aguero goal. And I think he come on and he had a bit of a point to prove, didn't he? So, and again, Tevez, you know, bad press, didn't do the right thing. But then, since then, he's come back on. And after speaking to, like, a lot of City fans, they've actually sort of grown to like him again because he's, he's been creating, he's been making things happen. And I think, sort of, Tevez coming back in has definitely helped City towards the end and like you say I think the dressing room they'll just be absolutely buzzing I think they can enjoy it now but I think they've got to then think about maybe regrouping for, for next year because it's like can they stay there so they've done it once but can they stay there well it's an absolutely great point um, also really do you think Mancini is out Fergie Fergie well obviously going into the, the last bit of the season the, the mind games have started well looking at it now yes he has won that <laughs> that match up but you know, it's just, it's just one of those where, for me, United have, have lost the title. Um, over the, the Easter weekend, they're seven, eight points clear. You, you're saying they're favourites to win it. The defeat at Wigan, the draw against Everton when they're 4-2 up with 15 minutes ago, that's, for me, where they've lost it. But at the same time, Mancini, as we spoke about earlier, has got that little bit of power, well, big bit of power now. Uh, he's going to be stronger in that dressing room. And next season, I'm sure some of the stuff that's gone on this season won't happen again. 
Well, we saw it, didn't we? I mean, we saw the fact that the, what he was going through on the sidelines, it looked like his job was going from, well, I'm either a hero or maybe I'm not going to have a job tomorrow. And he stuck with it. And you could see what he was going through as well, couldn't you? That's right. I think we, we all were. I think today we got a bit of an insight on what it is to be a, a real football fan, which, which we are. But it took us back years probably to when we were kids, watching the football, we was on the edge of our seat. And we got a real... You know, real taste of that today. It's been a great day, and you know, I'm not sure how we can we can ever top that season again. <laughs> no, without a doubt, I think we've both been watching football a long time. We both were on the floor, had our hands, head in our hands. So many different things happened that we'd never really seen before. But I'll tell you what, we'll talk about it later on, Stephen. Stay with us here on Sports World. Have your say. Well, really, just a little comment on your manager or ex-manager now. Roy Hodgson is leaving for England. Tell me a little bit about him and what it's been like working with him. Well, firstly, it's been an absolute an honour, a privilege to play with him, uh, play for him. Um, it was a little bit of a surprise when he got the job. I think Harry Redknapp was favourite for, you know, for most fans and, and even players. I think, you know, in our, in our own dressing room, we thought Harry Redknapp would get the job. But... You know, it's, it's no surprise that he's getting that job. He's got the, the CV, he's managed at Inter Milan, he's managed at Udinese, he's taken Switzerland to a major tournament as an international manager. So he's got the lot, really, um, to, to do well for England. He's not got that long to do it now, going into the Euros, but if the, if the England boys can take on board, you know, his coaching methods straight away, there's no reason why, why he can't go on and do well. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. But good luck to him and obviously delighted he's got that chance. Excellent. Well, we're continuing the conversation here on Sports World. Have your say. Please feel free to get in touch. Um, hashtag Swiz on Twitter. Um, you can call in on plus four four twenty seventy eighty three seventy three thirty three. And you can email on sportswise at bbc.com. Um, me and Reedy have been through a lot of emotions today. It's easily been the most exciting Premier League day in history. We've spoken a lot about City. We've spoken a lot about United. But what does this actually mean for the other teams trying to, trying to catch up City and United who are spending so much money, Reedy? Well, it's going to be difficult. Um, I think a lot of Arsenal fans who have done brilliantly to finish in, in third place today they're going to be wanting Arsene Wenger to spend some money, but there's no one that's going to be able to compete with a Man City. They've just won the league. I'm sure they're going to go again. There are talks of this Eden Hazard coming in from, from Lille in France for 30, 35 million. There's not anyone else in the Premier League that can compete with that spending. Uh, and I'm sure they're going to go again now, but United are going to come back next season. I'm sure they're going to give it a right go again. Well, and um, we can hear what Sir Alex Ferguson thought about it, and here's what he said after the match. I don't think anyone expected that. Everyone expected City to win. And um, they had to do it against 10 men for half an hour and five minutes injury time to help them. But at the end of the day, in bar for Manchester United, I congratulate Manchester City winning the week. It's not an easy week to win the Premier Division. Anyone who wins it deserves it because it's a, it's a long haul. Well, that's Fergie complaining about Fergie time. Um, we've got Guido over him. Buenos Aires, who's a Man United fan. Guido, Hello, how do you Guido. feel today? Hi, Guido. How are you? Good. Tell me about your feelings about City finally ending 44 years of not winning the title. Well, it's kind of disappointing for me because I've been a United fan since I was a kid. I've, I've used to watch all Man United fan with all the matches. And it's kind of difficult time right now. Guido, tell me a little bit about your feelings for Aguero, because you're from Argentina and he's uh, a hero over there. Yeah, the, it, there's every cloud, every cloud has a silver lining, so I'm an Independiente fan and watching Aguero waving an, an Independiente flag over there when winning the league was out of this world. He's, he's, Guido, He's the man. Guido, not just, not just Aguero, though. Tevez has come back into the, the City team. and I think Zabaleta. One, Zabaleta, one, an unsung hero for me. In the last, exactly. last few weeks of the season, Zabaleta has been, for me, their player of the last six games. He's been magnificent yep. keeping Mike Richards out. So, obviously, mixed emotions for you today. Exactly, yes. See, watching Zabaleta, which, which is 
a friend of my family is, is very, 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 I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a pride for me to, to watch him win this, win this league on, on, on the final match, scoring a goal, Aguero scoring a goal. I, I'm an, I, I am an United fan, but... It was nice to see, it was nice to see them, them doing well, but I'm sure you're still hurting badly today. Yeah. Stephen Liverpool, um, how do you feel about what people, I've heard people speculate the fact that Man City have bought the league. How do you feel about that criticism? Stephen Liverpool? Yeah. yeah. OK. How, Man, how do you I feel about the criticism that people say Man City have bought the league? I think it's a complete load of rubbish. And do you know why? My daughter here, she's got it on her iPod. The City team and the United team. And the United team cost nine million more player for player than the City team had out today. Eight. <laughs> to be fair, Eight million more. Steve, I, so, I, I do. I, I agree with you. I, I think any team that wins the Premier League, in a way, does does need to buy the title, if you like. They need to buy the players that are going to win them the league. Man United, United have United, United have bought big players over the years. Um, Blackburn, when they had the Jack Walker money, they in a way bought it. And we're seeing that with Man City now. I think fair play to City. You've got to buy the best players. And they've Steven, done well to win Steven, it. Just a, just a quote on that. Just a stat on that. City's team today was, cost £161 million. United's team £169 million. That's £8 million more. So it just doesn't give any credence to this, to this notion that City have bought the title. It really doesn't. So I think when we look at that, you have to give a lot of credit to Mancini, give a lot of credit to Man City in the way they've gone about their business. Um, really, we spoke about that earlier. What, what do you think? No, as I've just said, as I've, as I've just said there, I think um, any team that's going to do well in any division, we're seeing it now. The teams that are coming up from the Championship, they've spent money in their division, and if, you have to do that to buy the best players, to to pay the wages, and to do that in the Premier League, to win that league title, you have to spend big. That's what Man City have done. That's what Man United have done. That's what Blackburn did when they won the Premier League. So, uh, you know, there's no complaints for me. They've won it fair and square, and, and they deserve to have won it. Well, we're joined by Steve and Anoush down in Salford. Guys, <laughs> tell me a little bit about your conflicting feelings today. <laughs> Do you want to go first? All right, boys. <laughs> oh. You two all right there? Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> Could not believe it. Uh, I thought we were going to... I thought, I thought we'd, we'd lost it, to be quite honest. I mean, going up to injury time... 2-1, I actually turned to my mate, I said, sorry, I'll, we, we, we're not going to do a United, we're not going to win it this time, maybe next season. Where was, you, then, where was you watching it? I didn't have the bottle to, uh, to go out and about and watch it, I didn't have the bottle to go to a pub, so I was under a blanket in my bedroom <laughs> watching it. So. <laughs> well, you missed a great, you missed, you missed <laughs> great game, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, you're smiling, you're putting a brave face on it, I know you're hurting underneath there, your mate there, he looks... Happy, looks like a man who's won the title after 44 years of not winning it. It looks like he's ready to give you some stick. Tell me how you feel about it. He, he's wearing it well, isn't he? Um, I'm, I'm disappointed, but, you know, it doesn't always go on forever. And we knew as soon as City were given this cash injection, they were going to win it one day. And it just, it's going to be this season. So, I mean, I'm happy for the rivalry because growing up, I've never had that real rivalry with City fans. It's always been Liverpool fans. So, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm, I'm also... Very disappointed as well, but you've got to be a bit philosophical about it. Yeah, Steve, do you attribute any blame to Fergie in some of his team selections? No, not really, no, because that's all hindsight. I think he's always sent out the team that's going to, he thinks, do the job. And, you know, we've just had one of those seasons. There's been games where we've, we've just not been good enough. And, you know, you, you can't blame one individual for that. It's just one of those things. I mean, you can't win every day, can you? So. And is there worry? Is there worry for you now that the, the swing of power is going to the... The blue half of the city? It's not a worry. Steve, it's, Steve, it's a good point. I'm going to have to jump in there. Um, we're going to go over to a break. Just wanted to make sure you get back in touch later on on Sports World. Have your say. Hashtag Swise. Get involved with the conversation.
Welcome to Sports World Have Your Say. I'm Jason Roberts. It's been the most dramatic day in Premier League history as Manchester City's two injury time goals brought the club their first title in 44 years. What's your reaction? Are you over the blue moon? Also, what do you make of Joey Barton's one-man war on City's Argentines? And are you a weeping wanderer or a relieved ranger? We'll be talking about the relegation resolution. Post on facebook.com forward slash sports world have your say or tweet with the hashtag swise to get involved in the conversation. Joining us are West Brom defender Stephen Reid and England's women's striker Sue Smith. But first, a summary of the latest news. The top story so far today with me, Peter Dobby. The police in Mexico have found the mutilated bodies of nearly 50 people stuffed into plastic bags and dumped on a highway near the northern city of Monterrey. The bodies were found in the early hours of Sunday morning. Talks arranged by the Greek president to form a coalition government appear today to have stalled. Karolas Papalaios held meetings with the leaders of the three main parties, but it seems without success. The Ugandan military says it's captured one of the leaders of Joseph Kony's Lord's Resistance Army. He's Caesar Achelam, who is a major general in the LRA. He was caught in an ambush on Saturday in the Central African Republic. In Spain, anti-austerity protesters who occupied Madrid's main square in their tens of thousands yesterday have now returned today. The police had evicted the protesters from the Puerta del Sol square overnight. The head of uh, the internet giant Yahoo, Scott Thompson, is reportedly stepping down after concerns that he fabricated a computer science degree on his CV. Mr. Thompson, who became the company's chief executive in January, decided to resign after the news was revealed by a Yahoo shareholder. Several people are reported to have been injured in a suspected fuel fire just after the Williams team won the Barcelona Grand Prix. A number of people are being treated for smoke inhalation. We're back with Sports World Have Your Say with me, Jason Roberts. We've been talking about the most dramatic day in Premier League history today, when Man City finally ended 44 years of hurt to win the title. Uh, we have Hani in Cairo, who's a Man United fan. Hani, where does, this, where does this leave Man United and Alex Ferguson with an ageing squad competing against the money and the wealth of, the, of your neighbours over in Man City? Well, it's been obvious that um, City spent big and they spent well, actually. They bought well and uh, they got their awards this season. Uh, United, they're destined to have Berbatov... Uh, uh, leaving Old Trafford. Also, there's been talks about Owen and uh, Park Ji Sung as well. Um, probably United uh, need to get a big hit. Uh, I mean, uh, the strikers department needs uh, to be reinforced. We've only got now Rooney and uh, Welbeck, who's still maturing, is still developing along with other young players. Um, the midfield, we're not too sure yet. We, we don't know the, uh, the future of Fletcher. Uh, we don't know if Scorsi is going to play on uh, for another year, which is actually quite important when you think of all the experience uh, players like Scorsi and Giggs they bring to the team. And uh, definitely when Scorsi came back, he, uh, he changed uh, United's season uh, more or less. He, uh, his, his ability to control the game, dictate the tempo in many of the games, uh, had a very influential uh, role to play in the second half of the season. So probably uh, we don't definitely don't need to buy any more defenders now that we're probably going to have uh, Vidic back. We also have uh, Jones and Smalling, uh, young and uh, fresh as well. They definitely learned a lot this uh, season. Along with uh, Rafael, we're going to see how he develops next season. Probably we might find uh, need to find some sort of a replacement for uh, Patrice Sevra. He, he hasn't been the player he's been uh, for the past uh, maybe three or four years, but um, we probably need a, a, a new left back just to put him on his toes. Yeah. Um, Reedy, where do you see United going from here? Um, obviously, I think it was a record amount of points for a team not winning the title. Um, they've spent big money. They're going up against City. They're going to be competing for the same players. How can, they, how can Fergie outwit Mancini? Well, for me, I, I don't feel there's any any need for United to panic. Um, they probably underperformed at certain periods this season, but for them still to be there today, going into the last 10 minutes, still in with a shout, still winning the league, I don't think there's any great deal of uh, time to panic for them. I think they do need a couple of, like Hanny said there, a couple of big hitters maybe. There was talk last summer of a Wesley Snyder coming in. I do feel maybe they need one or two players 
of that quality just to add to the squad to get into that first 11. Um, but, you know, they're not a million miles off as they are. Sue, what's your thoughts? I have to totally agree. I don't think they can't panic, you know, and I think they, for me, they miss Vidic. You know, I think he's a, he's a massive player for them. He's, he's a leader, like on and off the field. And I think they, they did miss him, him on there. Obviously, Skulls came in, you know, give that bit of experience, that little bit of like, you know, his, his pass rate was absolutely amazing, better than, you know, I think anybody in the in the league. Um, I, I seen a quote the other day, but I just think that they don't need to panic. I think next season will be a different season. And yes, they need to strengthen, but so do, so do Man City. So it'll be quite interesting to see what happens next year. And, and Fergie's like, you know, psychologically very, very good, even in his, his post-match interview you know it was clever what he said and I think he'll he'll definitely sort of he'll push them on for, for next year. Sue do you think that Mancini has outwitted Fergie this season with you know they had the bust up on the famous bust up on the <laughs> sideline you know all the things that have been said do you think he's he's had one over the old man? <laughs> I think he'd like to think so. Um, I think I think Fergie probably have something to say. But yeah, it was it was quite interesting to see how Fergie reacted. You know, in in that little bus stop, it's he, he's normally quite cool, and uh, you know, he actually lost the plot a little bit. So he was probably feeling the pressure a little bit for the first time. And you know, it'll be quite interesting to see how he reacts to that. But I'm sure he won't let him get one over on him next time. <laughs> well, we have a QPR fan, Andrew. Um, he's a big QPR fan. Tell me how you're feeling about your performance today. Must be a of, although you lost, you put in a fantastic performance. Um, but there were some other things that happened in the match. Tell me how you felt about the whole thing. Um, it was a nerve-wracking day, of course. Um, it started off quite well. We were holding them out. And then, obviously, Zabaleta got the goal. And then Cissé scoring out of nothing, you know, with our first chance was amazing. And then Joey imploding, as only Joey can. Um, Speak to I've... me about that, Andrew. Honestly, what is he thinking there? You're in a position where you can be relegated to the championship and he gets sent off in that manner. I've been one of his um, supporters this year. A lot of QPR fans give him a, a, a tough time and you see him working so hard for the team. But it's happened twice now. He did it against Bradley Johnson at, at Norwich, you know. He was goaded into it. And, yeah, you could see Tevers gave him a little bit of a push. I don't know if it was a punch or anything, but then... Joey just, he just went off on one and, I, you know, it's inexcusable for a professional. He's the captain of the club and I think his time will come now. Fernandez and um, Amit Batia won't put up with that and I don't think Mark Hughes will either. So, he could have cost us. The fact that we went and scored a goal was amazing. You know, Jamie Mackey popped up, Traore puts his trademark crosses in and then, you know, it was back to the wall stuff. It was a bit Chelsea-Barcelona and then those last five minutes, it, you, you know, was just nerve-wracking and you could just see them going to score but you know we held on and thankfully Stoke did us a favour and we're still up which is the most important thing. Absolutely right Andrew, I've, obviously when I was at Blackburn uh, myself and Jason Roberts we was managed by Mark Hughes for me one of the best managers I've, I've ever had um, so I still think he's the right man for the job but you know how does he go about strengthening and strengthening the squad in the summer and, and who do you feel that they need to get rid of? Um, there's a few. There's a few of the, the the guys who came up from the championship. I mean, Clint Hill wasn't given a chance at the start of the season, but since he's come back into the team, we've looked solid at the back. Um, we've got a young player in Samba Diakite that, if he had played today, everyone would have seen what a great prospect he is. He's very Vieira-like. Um, so we have got a nucleus of good players. We do need to strengthen. Um, I think we need a really good winger. Adele's been fantastic the last few weeks. Um, you know, he's been disciplined and he, he, just, he just puts people on the edge of their seats and he can do stuff. He forces players back. So I think we probably need some strength in the fullback positions. Um, I think Nedim will end up playing alongside Anton in the middle. And, you know, Taewoo's a great left back and you've got Traore. There's not much there. I just think not, we just need a little not, bit more strength. Let's not forget about your top scorer, Haider Helgerson, as well, I believe. Where, where's he disappeared to? Haider got, Haider got injured at, um, I think, the beginning of January, and I don't think he's recovered in time. He's been on the bench a couple of times, but, you know, Haider wasn't given, you know, Haider was given a new contract in the summer by Neil Warnock, and I think he was on his way out, but because Warnock didn't have the funds to strengthen, Haider was brought on and he's done fantastic and you know what, there, there's no better centre forward in the air than Haider Helgerson. Well Andrew, let me just come in and, that, and give Joey Barton an opportunity. He's tweeted about what happened in the match. 
I can do nothing but apologise to the players and the fans. Still don't think it's a sending off. Try to take one of their players with me. We are safe and that is all that matters. Um, Reedy, we watched that together. What's your thoughts on that tweet? Well, um, look at, looking at the replay, for me, it does look like he has swung an arm. But at the same time, it looks like just before that, Tevez has done exactly the same. So for me, they obviously both going to be in trouble there. But it was just what happened after was just outrageous really we couldn't see whether it was a knee or a kick in the back of Aguero and then there was a head-to-head -head incident then walking off you got Balotelli as he would he's, he's piping up a little bit then he has to basically be forced down the tunnel so he like you say he's just practically imploded after the red card and but the, like, like he says the main thing QPR are safe I'm sure there's going to be a few re repercussions after that. Sue you've played at the highest level you played for your country what do you make of him saying there that he tried to take one of the opposition players with him um, <laughs> during the whole process of being sent off? Absolutely crazy. You know, I know passions are high. Like, we all know we've played in, like, important games and tense games. And your passions are high and, and you probably do do things you probably wouldn't do, you know, in, in hindsight. And, you know, yeah, he swung out of the, the player. He's getting sent off. And... and I just what he did afterwards was just unbelievable. I was watching it thinking, just walk off, you know, something else is going to happen. And then um, he tried to headbutt company. I was thinking, of all people, company's a big guy. <laughs> he'd, he'd absolutely lost the plot by then. And I just think, you know, it was it was just it was disappointing to see. And, and like they said, he could have totally left his, let his team down. And, and you know, thankfully they stayed up. But it it would have compl all the press would have been on him if, if that had been the case. I've had a few red cards in my day. I'm not sure Jason has. I'm not sure he's made a tackle, to be honest with you. But that is as, soon, harsh. as soon as you get that, that red card, it is, you know, the manager's always on to you to just sort of make your way off the pitch. Uh, you can only make things worse by, especially the reaction there. I'm sure there's going to be more than a, a three-game ban after that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd just like definitely. to go over to Stephen Anoush over in Salford. Um, Anoush, there was a lot of City rivalry going on there the ex-city players obviously mark hughes with the way things happen there how did you see that playing out uh well it was quite interesting with all the rivalries that seemed to pop up uh sunderland uh sorry qpr players that were um you know ex-city anua um and sean wright phillips and that seemed to for some reason mean that city were gonna it was more chance of City losing it. And then Sunderland players that were United fans and things like that. Not everything seemed to crop up. Um, to be honest, being a typical City fan, I actually believed all that kind of nonsense and thought, oh, yeah, Pro City will probably lose now going against Mark Hughes. Uh, but it um, turns out that we, uh, we are a different City now. So Brilliant. We, well, we have Kweku, who's a Liverpool fan. He's phoned in from Ghana. Hello, Kweku. Yeah, hello. Hello, Kweku. Tell me about how you felt today. Obviously, Liverpool not competing as high as you would have liked today, but how did you feel about the whole Premier League today? Oh, mate. <laughs> uh, I, just, I, just, I just sat down here and uh, all afternoon I've been waiting for this game. But, you know, when, when it was going on, and uh, at some point it felt like Man City were going to blow it. And, you know, I just kept praying and asking God to let them win because as a Liverpool fan, Anything that goes against Manchester United, I'm happy with it. So, you know, kudos, kudos, kudos to um, Man City, and it was an awesome game. Quaker, awesome, how's, you awesome. how's you feeling today being a Liverpool fan and watching the two Manchester sides doing so well? How's you feeling being where you are in the league? You're losing to, to Swansea today. And um, below Everton. And below Everton. League. So how are you feeling as a, a Liverpool fan and not competing at that, that right at the top end of the table? Um, see, this is not where we we'll expected to be, you know, um, from the beginning of the season. It hasn't been an easy season for us, but um, we just look to the future. I mean, Kenny, Kenny is in there, and I think Kenny is the man, he, he's the right person for the job. Everton has finished um, over and above us, but I think we beat them two times in the season anyway, and we actually beat them in the FA Cup as well. And um, that, that is uh, um, satisfying enough. Uh, hopefully, you have Stephen Man United fan shaking his head. Um, the, the rivalry is still there. Even sat next to a Man United fan, he's still shaking his head about what Liverpool fans has to say. Steve? It's just insane, isn't it? You know, <laughs> you're trying to justify finishing four points behind Everton after spending £120 million. You Steve, <laughs> Steve, are they still your main rivals, even after what's happened today? Yes, at the moment. If it keeps going the way it is, then City will be there in two or three years. 
Uh, that, that, um, that's a big statement coming from a Man United fan, sat next to a Man City fan, who have finally nailed it. 44 years, won the title, and are now going to be competing with you, with players. Um, they're going to be spending a lot of money. Everyone knows the money they have, and they're now going to go on and spend it. We're here on Sports World, have your say. Hashtag Swise, plus four, four, 20, 70, 83, 73, 33. Get involved with the conversation by email, sportswise at bbc.com. Also, you can get involved in Facebook, forward slash Sports World, have your say. We're back after the break. Join us. <laughs> Welcome back to Sports World, have your say. We've had many people tweeting in and texting. Mike Keegan tweets, spare a thought for those who left that one, two to QPR. Believe me, there were plenty. Hashtag MCFC. We have Martin, who's a Man City fan from Sweden. Martin, yeah. tell me, 44 years of hurt ended today. Yeah. When, you, when I found out I was gonna be on this show, um, I was I was trying to find the words to describe it, uh, but I couldn't. But I want to read. Can I read a quote? And a little. Can I read bit... a quote? Can I read a quote about how it feels? It's yes, bagging. go ahead. Yeah, uh, I want to quote our uh, neighbors from Trafford. Uh, this is how it feels to be city. This is how it feels. This is how it feels to be small. This is how it feels when your team wins nothing at all, nothing at all, nothing at all, and then you win the league. <laughs> It's a good point. It's a very good point. I just want to bring in Hanny from Cairo. Hanny, just tell me a little bit about where the title was lost and do you attribute any blame to Sir Alec Ferguson and his team selections? Hello, Hanny? No, we've lost Hanny. No problem. We'll go across to Andrew. Andrew, tell me your thoughts on what is, without a doubt, the most exciting day in Premier League history? Oh, it's just been amazing, um, Jason. You know, you just watch the game and uh, you just see all the results that meant something. First, second, third, fourth and fifth all being played for and then you've got the bottom of the table, you've got QPR and, you know, Bolton vying to stay up and it depended on who scored where. Um, so many ups and downs and uh, as a QPR support, I've certainly been through it over the last 15 years and um, when, when we've been in the championship and League One but uh, today just watching all the different results coming in you've got Arsenal and Spurs and then you've got Man City and Man United and you've got QPR and Bolton so much r riding on it it just makes English Premier League the best league to watch in, in the world you know the fact that QPR were winning 2-1 until the 96th minute 92nd minute and then you know, you, you just saw uh, the relief on the Man City players. You know, they were uh, sorry, fans. They were kicking the chairs. They were throwing their jackets down. And the next minute, they they've got total and utter jubilation. But um, today, I'm just a happy QPR fan and happy to be able to watch the best league in the world. Omar in Nairobi. Talk to me about the fact that um, I've Man City of Man City have now completed what a lot of people didn't think they'd be able to do with when they were eight points behind. They got back. What changed? What changed when you was eight points behind? You lost that game against Arsenal. What changed? Uh, to say the truth is, um, going eight points behind, I was the biggest pessimist. I knew we were going to Carroll Road and then host um, uh, United at the Etihad. I, I, I basically thought we had lost it. But um, uh, that game that we went to Carroll Road and won by five goals, that actually turned, turned the tide because on the following day, United got beat at, uh, at Wigan, and uh, you could sense that uh, things were st was starting to, to, to turn. I would say also um, the manager kind of, you know, motivated his players um, um, and behind the scenes while saying other things, you know, like uh, bringing in complacency to, to United. Um, the truth is we have quite big players in the, in, the, in, the, in the club, and they came out big in the last four, four games, okay. without a doubt. strengthen the squad now, that's for sure. They will do, no doubt. I think there's one massive question that we'll all be going into the summer looking at, and that is what to do with, with young Mr Balotelli. How would, you, how would you go about dealing with him? Would you keep him or um, would, you, would you let him go? It, 
Um, I'll, I'll definitely um, let, let him go. Um, Tevez as well. Because in a team, you need harmony. I always give the best example of uh, Newcastle United. Um, they released Kevin Nolan and so, uh, sold Kevin Nolan, released um, Joey Barton, and also sold Andy Carroll. These were big figures in that, in that dressing room. And this brought harmony in the team. It's, it's, not, it's not a wonder that we see them doing what they did um, by finishing fifth, which is very respectable. I believe um, um, uh, City have a great core play players, uh, players like Balotelli with their sideshows, um, uh, you know, um, Tevez with, is he with us or not with us? You know, um, those kind of characters should not be there. I, and I, the reason they should not be there I is agree. because of Mancini. I, ju I just want to bring uh, in Halley in Cairo. Look at Mancini doesn't know Halley, how to handle. where did Man United Sorry? go from here? Uh, well, basically, Man United need to uh, get over it. Uh, it's, I mean, this is football, and the 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 margin between uh, winning and losing is very thin. Uh, I mean, we lost on goal difference. So, and it's it's quite clear that this season wasn't the best uh, season for Man United. Uh, we just basically need to mature. Uh, the young players need to mature. Uh, as Roy Keane said, I mean, losing the title might not be, you know too bad because uh, you can't expect that young players they shouldn't really expect to just show up for United wear the red shirt and just win titles uh, it needs a lot of hard work and definitely needs consistency and that's what's been lacking really uh, for United this season so I think they are on the right track uh, just need to uh, buy maybe three or four uh, new players uh, really raise the level of competition in the uh, changing room and on the training as well um, and from then I mean I think we can do it all over again I mean we've seen this happen before with Arsenal 98 we've seen it happen with Chelsea under Mourinho and uh, now we're seeing it happen again with Man City under Mancini and I can safely say that United are just gonna be there you know once again and they're probably gonna win the title I mean if not next season then definitely the season afterwards Honey, it's very interesting that Sir Alex Ferguson said this whole challenge is making him feel lung, young again. We've been joined by Ashava over in Turkey. Ashava, the Premier League, the most exciting league in the world. How did you enjoy it today? Yes, uh, well, it was very interesting today. I must say that after a long wait, uh, Man City was able to, to, to really come up with something. And uh, first of all, congratulations to them. Though I really enjoyed every minute, uh, especially the, the last minutes were really nerve-cracking, I must say. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know where it was going. At one time, I really thought that Man City were just uh, really wasting time. And uh, basically, what was perturbing me as an Arsenal fan was like uh, when uh, the big man, Abramovich, came in at Chelsea, there was a perception that money buys trophies. And that became like a big problem for Wenger and Arsenal because Arsenal Wenger wasn't the person who was buying. And today, personally, I didn't say I couldn't say that I was supporting Man City because I didn't want the justification to come to come to pass that money can really buy trophies because that would be really bad for Arsenal. Ashaba, and the pressure would be much on Arsenal there. Wenger, the technician. Yeah, I just have to cut in there, Shava. Thank you for joining us here on Sports World. Have your say on the most exciting day of the Premier League history. We all enjoyed it, and. Joining us here at Sportswood, have your say. It was a great day.